Amen. Good morning. Aren't you thankful for our veterans? Uh, we've come together this morning in freedom. Nobody give us any trouble coming in here. It's because of these guys. The freedoms we enjoy, the freedoms we have, because we have some men and women that would take a stand and fought for our country. A lot of them didn't make it. Gave her lives for the things we enjoy today. We're, we're blessed. Amen. Amen. So thankful for it. Uh, good to see you this morning. If you have your Bibles and you want to be turning to a Ecclesiastes chapter 6. I uh, want to share a message this morning. I'm going to be in several different places. I hope I don't have a uh, chase all messed up this morning trying to keep up with me. But uh, uh, Is our soul filled with good? I'll, we'll get into that a little deeper. But is our soul filled with good this morning? As we'll, we'll get into that as we read. If you would stand with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 6. found your place say amen. amen there is an evil which I have seen under the sun and it is common among men a man to whom God hath given riches wealth and honor so that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof but a stranger eateth it this is vanity and it is an evil disease if a man begat an hundred children and live many years so that the days of his years be many and his soul be not filled with good and also that he have no burial, I say that an untimely birth is better than he. And his soul be not filled with good. I want to focus on that this morning. And get a little deeper about, but the, our, fo our soul, we, we can own everything in the world and not have the peace of God in our hearts. And not have to have, not have that peace and that understanding and that comfort that only comes with Him. Because there's times when that's the only thing that gets me through. I don't know about you, but I, uh, there's times in my life that if I haven't had that, I, I'd, I'd just throw up my hands and run. But I'm so thankful for the good that comes with the Lord. Let's pray. Father, again, we come to you and we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your mercy and grace and our veterans that stood. We thank you for these children that came on stage this morning. Thank you for the song leaders, the musicians. Uh, Lord, uh, the, every teacher that taught a lesson this morning, every hand that was shook. Lord, we thank you for everything that's been done, the offerings being given. Lord, we just praise you and thank you. Thank you for these folks sitting at the back, taking care of the sound and the videos and everything. And Lord, we appreciate that. And now, Father, we pray for the ones unable to be here today. You would bless them abundantly and you would speak to them and encourage them. And now, Father, I pray for the old preacher boy. Lord, you forgive me of my sins. And Lord, remove anything that would hinder me from being used this morning and Lord that you would uh, uh, speak to our hearts today and challenge us and encourage us and Father we leave different than we came in we leave with the desire to serve you and make you number one in our lives in Jesus name I pray amen amen you may be seated There in verse 1 of that passage, it said that there is an evil which I have seen under the sun. There's an evil. Uh, uh, and of course, we know who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon. And uh, the wisdom he had and, the, and what the Lord had done for him. But I... Uh, the Lord just spoke to me about this passage, and like I say, I've got a lot of other. But, I, but my mind went to uh, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 17, and I'll just read uh, uh, just a little bit of that. But thou shalt not covet, and I won't read the rest of it. You can read it there for a minute. But thou shalt not covet, and the covet means to desire or long after. Uh, want something that's somebody else's. And we live in a nation today and we live in the world that the thought of is that 
things satisfy. Things satisfy. Uh, uh, we have the, uh, 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 the thinking that the more that we get, the better we are. Amen? Uh, uh, the bigger our, our 401k is, the better we are. The bigger our house is, the better we are. The fancier our clothes are, the better we are. Come on now, am I at the wrong place? And the Lord really laid this on my heart this week and, and a, a, a thinking that, um, well, I shared, uh, uh, Brother uh, Chris is back here, but I shared with FCA over at, um, they're the Eagles, Grandview. And I shared in Philippians 4.11, where Paul said, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Folks, I want to share with you more. Now, there's the secret of Christian living. There's the secret of, of, of uh, not just crit, but, uh, but of living the life that uh, we, we don't get caught up in all the commercials. I told the kids that morning, I said these commercials on your tell. I asked them, how many of you ever watch television? I got strange looks, but I said they're focusing on you, trying to sell you and tell you that if you had that product, you'd be a better looking person. You'd be higher up on the status. You would be, and that is exactly uh, uh, what, how they are on all of us. And we live in the world where the devil tells us that the more we have, the more we gain, the more we get, uh, the higher on the status we are, the higher on the, the uh, em employment line, whatever it would be, that we're better. And this morning we're hearing from a man that the Bible says is the wisest man ever lived. And Solomon here is talking about someone that has everything. But he don't have that good in his soul. He's got everything that he could ask for. He has the wealth. He has, I, I kind of think he's talking about himself, myself here. You, Brother David, I, I think he's talking about himself. I'm going to read you his testimony in a few minutes. But he said this is a guy that's got everything. But he don't have that peace down in his heart. He don't have, when he laid his head on the pillow at night, uh, his mind went everywhere and, and that he, he didn't have everything uh, that he thought he had. See, we live in the world today that there's a lot of people that thinks that they've got a lot of good stuff and they have a lot of good stuff, but they don't have that good in their soul. They don't have that good of knowing that it don't matter uh, 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 what happens. It don't matter if you don't wake up in the morning. If you don't wake up, it you'll wake up in glory. Glory, hallelujah. I tell you, that is a peace when you go to bed at night to know that if something happened and you didn't make it through the night, that it would be all right. That you'd wake up on the realms of glory and say, man, oh, life, these streets are gold, ain't they? Glory, hallelujah. Can you imagine the things that we've been taught, the things we've read, and then when we get to see it, when we tread down through Rainbow Avenue. Glory, hallelujah. See, that's the peace that passes. See, there ain't a thing in this world that I could own give me the peace like that does. Amen. Now, I've never had a million dollars, but I know it wouldn't give me that much peace. I don't guess I ever will. But I want to give you the testimony of the wisest man that ever lived. And uh, if you want to turn there, uh, it's just a couple of pages. Uh, I'll read it out of here. Starting at verse 4, chapter 2. Ecclesiastes 2. Starting at verse 4. I made me great works. I builded me houses. I planted my, me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards. And I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit. I made me pools of water to water therewith, the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. 
I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and other provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that, uh, uh, that of all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, don't you listen to this, I kept not from them. Withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. And I want you to look what he said in verse 11. He said, then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought. I believe here what he's saying, I, I took inventory. I stepped back and I looked at everything that my hands had brought. All my hard work had come. And on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of the spirit. And there was no profit under the sun. This man owned everything. Maybe the richest that it was ever was. His kingdom may have been the richest kingdom. People came from everywhere to see him. They brought him gifts. They, they just wanted to be in his presence. And the queen of Sheba said, I just had to come and see you. And it's greater than I was told. And this is where Solomon, and this was his testimony. He said, I looked. I took inventory. And everything was empty and insufficient. No satisfaction or happiness or pleasure was in all these things that I spent my life to do. Wow. I don't know about you, but that just blows me away. See, we, when we see people like that, if we don't raise your hand, but if we would... That's people we admire. That's people we won't be like. That's people we envy. That's people that gets worshipped around the world. Amen? And, and Solomon said, after all of this, it was empty. If you go back to 6 and, chapter, and verse 3, if a man began a hundred children and have many Years so that the days of his life be many, and his soul not be filled with good. And there's where this man was. His soul wasn't filled with good. I want you to turn with me now to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 12. It's not too bad. That's your introduction. Now we'll start the message. Amen. Uh, Luke chapter 12. And starting at verse 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns. I will build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? In verse 21. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. I want to look, if, if we look what Solomon said in his testimony, and I don't know if you noticed it, and I didn't really pinpoint it, but he used the personal pronoun 34 times. I, me, my. Now in this passage, uh, the guy here talking uses the personal pronouns 11 times. I, me, my. Now, 
When our mindset and our thoughts is on us, making us happy, doing me, my, this and that, we wind up and we have, may not have the good in our soul that, that the Bible is talking about. See, God sees us different than people does. The Bible says God looks on the heart, man looks on the outward appearance. And, and that can be talked about someone that we think is mean and is saved. Or that can be somebody we, we exalt and we do. And God really knows what's on the inside. We might think they're famous and God might think they're foolish. This guy in this parable here that I'm reading, God calls him a fool. And, and, uh, so, uh, and we may say somebody's popular and God may see them as perishing. We may see them as rich and God see them as ruined. This man was ambitious, successful, but his heart was not right with God. And I have no idea who I'm speaking to this morning. God has just laid this on my heart. And the other day he really spoke to me hard while I was in the study. But I want to tell you this morning, I don't care what you own. I don't care what you're worth. I don't care how much fun you have. If God, if Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life and your soul and you've asked him to forgive you of your sins and make him the Lord of your life, you've got a longing in your heart that only he can feel. I've heard that every soul has a God-shaped void in it. And we try to stick so many things in this void. We try to put pleasure in it. We try to put materials in it. We try to put uh, uh, all of these things and we try, try to cram them. And it will not satisfy our soul and our longings until we fill that void with Him. Amen. Amen. In verses 13, and you don't have to pull them up, but, but just before this passage, in verses 13 to 15, there was someone in the group that Jesus was in that asked him, said, won't you talk to my brother and tell him to divide our inheritance? He's cheating me, or I guess whatever he thought. And I want you to see the response, the, the, what Jesus said and the warning that he gave him in verse 15. He said, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things which he possesseth. You know what we have? And see what, what the guys hear a lot of times. Where did this rich man's blessings come from? He said it was his labor. But James says all good gifts come from above a father of lights whom there is no variableness. They're turning, he'll never change. And if we have a gift, uh, if you got a home this morning, it come from God. If you got a car this morning, it come from God. If you had clothes to put on this morning and a pair of shoes, it come from God. You might say, preacher, I work for all that. Well, your breath and your strength that you had to work come from God. Amen. And everything that we have and we enjoy in this life comes from the Father of lights. And if we don't give Him the glory and we don't give Him the credit for it, I tell you, we're going to miss the boat all around. I want us to look at this parable and we'll kind of break it down and First of all that I see in verses 16 through 18 is that worldly goods are temporary. And he spake a parable unto them saying the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself saying what shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said this will I do. I'll pull down my barns and build greater and there I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. His, all of his prosperity was earthly. His crops did good. He had a great harvest. He said, let's build new barns. Let's, let's get bigger. Let's uh, 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 take this business. 
This has come to my mind. I heard a story of a guy that was on a trip and he was in another country and there was a man that had a little fishing boat. And he went out of the morning and he caught a few fish and he took them to the market and sold them and then and there was a guy from America come by him and he said, you know, what do you do the rest of the day? You're going home. He said, well, I go sit on the front porch and swing. I spend time with my family. We eat together. We sing together. We enjoy the rest of the evening. He said, have you ever thought about buying two boats? You could buy two and then fish longer. And you have more money and then you could buy another boat. You could buy you a bigger house. You could buy this. And then the next thing you know, you would have a fleet. And you could just go on and just run the business and have all this fleet. And the, the guy said, then what would I do? He said, well, you could retire. He said, what's that mean? He said, you could go sit on the front porch. Spend time with your family. He said, forget it, it's just an idea. <laughs> Amen. And he saw, he was saw as a success. Everybody looked, probably looked at this man and said, man, how smart he is and what a businessman he is. Look what his crops has done, and he is, he is so brilliant, and just look what he, what he has done. But the bad thing about it was he didn't know God. See, what we have on this earth don't matter, folks. Now, I know I am not preaching a popular message this morning. Uh, I'd say people has turned me off pretty quick. This is, this is not popular. But I'm telling you, it's the truth. It's right out of the Word of God. And the reason I preach messages like this is because I love you. And I love your family. And you might say, preacher, you ain't been here long enough to love us. I have. God, God broke my heart with you real soon. And I love you. And I don't want you one day to stand in front of Almighty God. And say, God, I did this and I did that and I, I went to church every Sunday. And he'd say, it don't matter, I'm not in your heart. You never asked me to forgive you. You never committed your life to me. You just showed up on Sunday morning. Amen. See, the things and what we do in this life don't matter. All that matters is where we stand with God when we stand on that last day before God. See, he was not rich toward God, that it says in verse 21 of this passage. His trust was in what God had given him, not in the God that gave it to him. Let me say that again. His trust was in what God had given him, not in the God that gave it to him. And I'm afraid there's a lot of people that around the world today that has their faith and their hope in their 401ks, in their inheritance, in their property, in their uh, uh, education, and in things. And these things are not bad and, uh, and they're good. But if we have our trust and our hope and our faith in these things, uh, one day that will be uh, uh, blowed away when we stand before Almighty God. The second thing that I see in verse 18 and 19, and he said, This will I do, I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. I will say to my soul, So thou hast many, much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Worldly goods are not trustworthy. Worldly goods are not trustworthy. They just last a little while. What does the Bible say? There's joy in sin for a season. And then there's the reckoning. There's a payday. What's the old, the old, uh, old saying? If, if you're going to dance, you're going to have to pay the fiddler. Amen. And there's coming a day of reckoning. 
See, his future looked good. His retirement looked good. He probably thought, I've got it made. I mean, here, I'm, I'm uh, man, I'm in good shape. Everybody envies you. I've got a Tesla. I used to say Lexus, now I say Tesla. I've got everything. I've got the mansion on the hill. I've got the big money invested. Uh, I was smart enough to buy a thousand shares of Google stock. Now I'm talking, no, I, I, that's not personally, I'm saying this is what that guy said. <laughs> and see, I, I'm trying to put it down where we understand where he's coming from. And he had everything looking forward to him. He had promised himself a good life. See, it said here that he said to his soul. And in verse 19, and I will say to my soul. Soul. The soul here it means the man himself. He was talking to himself just like Solomon said over in Ecclesiastes. That he was speaking to himself. And he said, he said self, you've done good. You have done well. I think you pat yourself on back. I'm kind of proud of you. And he was talking to himself and encouraging himself of how great that he was. In, in 6 verse 2, again in, in Ecclesiastes. A man to whom God hath given riches and wealth and honor. So that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth. That is where this God was. This guy was. God had supplied everything and everything. And, and he had promised himself. But he did not realize that the good gifts didn't come from his hard work. These people worked just as hard as him that didn't have it. It came from God. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10, the Bible says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The works, did you get that? The works that we work, the things that, that we put up and the things that we admire, the things we worship, the things we spend our life to do will one day be burned up. The only thing that won't be burned up according to the Word of God here is the treasures we've laid up in heaven. Amen. I think we ought to be better off to put, uh, building them treasures up instead of the ones down here. I didn't get many amens right there. And I didn't mean to share this, but I want to share, I want to share something personal with you. Most of y'all remember, uh, Rhonda and I come here, we had, a, we had a farm over on the highway. We had 50 acres. Raised a bunch of tobacco, had some cattle. And it was our, our goal to farm that farm and Raise those cattle, and and I, we was bad in debt, and we worked like dogs. And I was up on the tractor one night, up on top of the hill, and I looked around over the farm. The Lord spoke to my heart, and he said, won't you sell this place and put this work that you're doing here in for me? I talked to Rhonda and I said, I think the Lord's leading them to sell the farm. And that time, I started spending it more to the things of God. Rhonda asked me, I never will forget, she asked me that night when we was getting ready to sell the farm. She said, when you drive by this place, it's right, it's visible from the highway. When you drive by, are you going to be okay with selling it? I said, yeah, I'll, I'll be good. I've never regretted it. I've never regretted it. Because I've been laying treasures up in heaven since then. 
And that's the ones that matter. The farm over on the highway ain't going to make nothing for me. But God, I'll stand before him one day. Glory, hallelujah. See, he seen then that he, I was going to be the pastor here one day. I had no idea. And he didn't want me spending all those hours farming. He wanted me to spend them in the Word and doing what he wanted me to do. Amen. Now, I'm not bragging on me. I, God just brought that to my heart. The third thing, and I'm just about done. It's 12 o'clock. Trust in worldly goods is fearful. In verse 20. And this is what we, I want us to really focus on. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these things be which thou hast provided? It didn't matter everything he had done. He come to the point where his soul was going to be required and he was getting ready to go into eternity. I don't know where you are with the Lord this morning. I have no idea who's saved and who's not. I, I, some I think is, but I, I can't see your heart. But God knows us, and one day we're going to stand before God. Hebrews 9, 27 says that it's appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. And that time... When we go out into eternity to stand before God, all that's going to matter is what we did with Jesus Christ. I can tell you on the authority of God's Word, anything else don't matter. Are you saved this morning? Have you asked Jesus into your heart? Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're going to go to heaven then? See, his possessions could not help him. And back Ecclesiastes 2, in the last part of that verse, it says, Yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. And this is vanity and is an evil disease. Uh, the Lord told him, And all these things you work for, somebody else is going to get to enjoy them. Amen? And all the things he had laid up, he will not get to enjoy because he was leaving this life and going into eternity, and somebody else was going to get to eat all that fruit out of them bins. Can I be real, real honest with you? The family probably fought over them. Amen? He would leave his fields and enter the fires of hell. He would leave all that he had done and all his enjoyment and then would his eyes would wake up in hell. In uh, uh, Luke chapter 16... The Bible says, this is the rich man of Lazarus, and it says, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Folks, things won't save your soul. Being a good person won't save your soul this morning. Dropping money in that tithe offering plate that come by won't save you. Being here every time the door's open don't save you. Going to be in the baptistry will not save you. It comes a point when you, have, you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Where you say, Lord, I, I trust you that you're the Son of God and that your blood was to cover my sins and pay for my sins. Will you forgive me of my sins and invite the Holy Spirit of God into your heart and say, I'll trust you the rest of my life. I remember right over here praying that night and I said, I don't know what all I said, but there's one thing the Lord keep reminding me that I said. I said, if you'll forgive me and save me and come into my heart, I'll trust you the rest of my life. Amen? I've done it for 30 years. I hope I hang on. Verse 21, he says, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Are you rich toward God this morning? Is he the Lord? Have you trusted him? 
And this, this thought came to me, and I've heard it so many times. If he is not Lord of all, he is not Lord at all. Amen? He's Lord to be Lord of all. See, he's a jealous God. And he ain't going to share his glory with nobody or nothing in this world. And in conclusion, you know what it means when the preacher says in conclusion? Absolutely nothing. What if this was your last day? Here this Bible talks about a man that said, and this, God said, this is your last night. This is it for you. What if you're sitting in here this morning? One of us, I have no, we have no idea who won't make it back. And this was, your, this was it. This was your last day. Do you have an inheritance in the kingdom of God? Do you, were you supposed to be in 2 Corinthians 6, 2? For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I don't know what you've been waiting on. I don't know the time that you've been waiting to commit your life to the Lord, but God has just stirred me so strong in this message. And I feel that there may be some in here that's never really committed to the Lord and that has accepted that and said, I'm going to serve you and I'm going to follow after you and I'm going to trust you to forgive me of my sins. I encourage you this morning. The Bible said today is the day of salvation. I have got such a strong feeling this morning that this may be somebody's last chance to be saved. The Lord had not moved on me a whole lot in preaching like he has this morning. And as you see, I probably preach different than I normally do. But I want to ask you this morning, are you saved? Do you know Jesus? 